Welcome. Today's post is, Sports Chokes, Red Sox Massacre, Coach McKay slash McVeigh, Movie Murder Inc., Death of the 1861 Elephant Man and Buffalo Bill O.J. Simpson. Published on October 20, 2023. Here's an interesting fact, this is post 187. Here are the topics we'll be decoding today. You can always find this list in the description below. If you enjoy this video, please press the like button, and subscribe for weekly full-length blog posts, and shorter, more shareable videos. Let's begin. Just about everything in the media is a planned calm. Some are much more obvious than others, like when a team of pro athletes go from the best to the worst. A team with the best three-pointing ratio suddenly like a light switch can't hit anything for 27 attempts. The odds being 1 in 186,000, and it happened at the worst moment. They call it a choke as a way to justify such an oddity, but how can an entire team, the entire team that is the best at doing that very thing choke at the same time for the same length of time? A more likely answer is it's a calm. The kind I decode all the time, but I won't be decoding that one today. I suck at sports and my way to compensate is trying to pick the easiest fruit. If I can't solve something in a few minutes I move on to another. The events that scream so loudly and obviously that I can't help but find the answer quickly. Hopefully the right one, but even if I screw up one or two due to sucking at sports, I'm sure I get three or four right and my history digging will always be a learning experience. Boston Red Sox Massacre and the Soviet Vietnam. The most obvious of which was the sports event known as the Boston Red Sox Massacre. That name gives away the intent because it's such a specific reference. What do I mean? What happened that day? July 20, 1978. Boston Red Sox downfall begins. July 20, 1978. Soviet Reds downfall begins. The Red Sox were up by 14 over their rivals and then inexplicably turned into the worst team in the league. Yankees caught up and then destroyed the Red Sox in the Boston Massacre. The downfall of the Red Sox was timed to the beginning of the uprising against Red Soviets in Afghanistan. Afghan-Soviet war is credited as being a crucial thing that broke the USSR. It was their Vietnam, but worse. CIA played a large role in making it worse. Moreover the clincher is the very name Boston Red Sox Massacre. What is that a reference to? It was a crucial event mobilizing American revolution against the British Reds coats. The horrors of a massacre uniting people against invaders like Soviet was to Afghanistan. It spells out the ops going on with the CIA at the time. In the 1970s Red equals Soviet Russia so it's far too precise to be anything but highly confident. This has the makings of a pillar decode that I can use to help clarify a lot of other major things. The Boston Massacre is four games after their giant 14 lead dropped to four, and they were massacred in four. This made both teams have curious ratios of precisely 99-63-99, minus 63 leading to a tiebreaker for the final. Which they lost to the Yankees who then won yet another championship. The whole thing parallels the plan at the time. The Soviets being way up but then their Vietnam becomes a light switch sending them to the bottom. That is what happened in history and the CIA officially facilitated it. It is perplexing how it could be so public and yet happen as planned. If it weren't so precise I'd doubt it. There must have been a no-win situation that forced it, unless they wanted it that way. If some at the top of Russia wanted to end USSR, how would they do so if people under want to remain? They need to first sour relations, and in that light it's a logical choice. But it's just a quick hypothesis. I need to dig up more to confirm slash reject either way. I'm still trying to pin down the full breadth of how sports is used. For any calm my first step in identifying intent is in looking at the time frame it occurred. Often doing nothing more than that will reveal a famous event that has an obvious connection to the calm. For example. The fumble, McVeigh slash McVeigh. November 18, 1978. Jonestown Massacre, Mass Suicide Murder of 900. 
November 19, 1978, famous NFL choke, the fumble. Without details there doesn't appear to be a connection. However, as we dig it'll become clear that this NFL choke was the direct result of what happened at Jonestown. This is a good test for decoders, understanding the connections require critical thinking of context. The point to focus on is on what caused the suicides. The cult is to blame, but I'm talking about the exact sequence of events leading to their choice to kill themselves. The answer is well documented. A U.S. rep flew to Jonestown and confronted the cult and applied pressure to an unstable situation. In reaction the cult murdered him and entourage and then 900 plus people committed suicide. They began by forcing their many kids to kill themselves. Now take that history and think about what made the NFL game the next day famous. That NFL game is famous because all New York had to do was nothing. Just run out the clock, but despite his very team demanding they do that, the offensive coordinator overruled everyone and demanded a handoff. This led to a fumble and losing a game that was already won. This was the day after the tragedy. After a congressman was murdered when he decided to kick a beehive instead of just waiting out the clock. This led to their execution and the mass suicide. This game was the announcement of what happened. The man responsible for the plan was fired the next day and the event was so famous and stigma was so great that he never touched a football or talked about it for the rest of his life. This demonstrates how important this calm was. In fact, it remains so because. It cemented a policy of taking a knee whenever possible to always run out the clock. This event was therefore permanently etched into NFL as a guidepost on policy. It also may have created McVeigh as a symbol for mass death as the coach for the losing team. You know who I'm talking about. McVeigh slash McVeigh. August 21, 1992. Ruby Ridge standoff, Waco precursor, inspires Tim McVeigh to bomb. October 1992, International Campaign to Ban Landmines Begins. June 12, 1997, Princess Diana Landmine Speech. June 13, 1997, Timothy McVeigh Recommendation of Death Sentence. A face likely used in media to coordinate actual ops tied to removing terrorists. Anyway. Taking a knee is akin to praying and a correlation with this whole situation with church. It also brings to mind all the kneeling we see in recent years as protest. Coincidence or it may unlock more as I dig. Either way it's already unlocked plenty. Now that I understand that, taking a knee equals running out the clock. November 3, 1986. Iran-Contra story first breaks in obscure Syrian magazine. Plus one year. November 3, 1987. Colin Kaepernick born. November 3, 1992, Bill Clinton elected. Running out the clock equals not reporting a major scandal. The very first time it becomes national news. August 22, 2016, Clinton emails to be released three weeks before election. August 26, 2016, Colin Kaepernick fame begins for national anthem protests. This was the first game possible to react might have been about ignoring the HRC scandal. That's a big, might, as I'm throwing out a hypothesis. If so the answer seems to be, instead of HRC, talk about race, a replacement narrative. Might have continued in the same way against Trump, only the other way around. Ignore positive and focus on race. Buffalo Bills and Code. Until last year the most famous choke-slash-comeback in football by points was in 1993. The Houston Oilers were up 35-3 and lost the game by 3 to Buffalo Bills on the 3rd of Jan. Interestingly the biggest choke-slash-comeback in NHL also involved a team named Oilers 10 years prior. Up until that Buffalo Bills game, the only time a team had ever led by 30 but not one was in 1960 and once again a Buffalo Bills game. Is there a special meaning to a comeback in relation to the Buffalo Bills? We need to understand the symbolism of the Buffalo Bills. The origin of the name is Buffalo Bill Cody. They chose this name over the name Bullets, among others. 
I clearly have to decode the original Buffalo Bill, which I will do. There is a great clue to it if we look at the origin of the name. June 16, 1947. Buffalo Bills renamed by Frontier Oil Company. June 16, 1947. Buffalo Bills A.C. Allen Cowlings born famous for being Buffalo Bills O.J. Simpson accomplice in fleeing the police. Big clue. But it won't make sense until we get into the original guy this all invokes. Buffalo Bill was most famous for his Wild West show. May 19, 1883. First of many Buffalo Bill Wild West shows. May 20, 1883. Krakatoa begins erupting becomes the loudest noise in history later in the year. What does the debut of Buffalo Bill have to do with a famously loud noise? Once I dug into the shows themselves the answer became apparent. The finale was said to be, Custer's Last Stand, but in reality was, a portrayal of an Indian attack on a settler's cabin. Cody would ride in and defend the family. Either way this unlocks everything. This was right before the era of motion pictures in fact he was one of the very first subjects for them. So his internationally famous team toured around the country presenting terrifying Indian attacks that they needed to be protected from. Psyop. But it's more than that. By virtue of putting on the show of a terrorist attack, those shows were therefore equipped to create the specter of an actual attack. So they act as propaganda first and foremost, but most likely were also used to coordinate real news. This explains the Krakatoa connection as it was famous for being the loudest noise in history. It was also said to be the origin of the scream painting. Symbolism of panic and terror. This may well be the origin of modern psyops. At least for the USA. Named the Congress of Rough Riders, which may explain Teddy Roosevelt's nickname as well as how such events were engineered. As in wars fought after prepping the populace with scare ops. When did the U.S. begin taking over countries to make banana republics? The origin of USA banana republic takeovers. I would be more surprised if these wars weren't prepped first with psyops. So that gives us our answer, now let's go back to the games. If the symbol is psyops. January 27, 1991. Buffalo Bills first of four consecutive Super Bowl losses. January 30, 1991. Silence of the Lambs, Catching Buffalo Bill. Includes famous performance by Whitney Houston of the Star Spangled Banner. Whitney Houston equals White House. Which at the time was run by a man tied to Houston, Texas. November 3, 1992. Clinton beats H.W. Bush. November 25, 1992. Whitney Houston in Bodyguard Top Movie Soundtrack of All Time. Protecting from Killer or PSYOP. With all that in mind the two Buffalo Bills games tied to massive comebacks may come into focus. The 1960 Buffalo Bills collapse to the Broncos. Bronco. Both games took place just before a new president promising big change came into office. JFK in 1960 and Clinton in 1993. Both games are opposite results as well. November 8, 1960. JFK elected. November 27, 1960. Buffalo Bills' stunning collapse leading to a tie to the Denver Broncos. I suspect the symbol is that prior to this point PSYOPs were in control, which explains the lead and JFK was there to end the domination. Hence the tie game as ending. This may unlock Bronco as a symbol. Bronco equals you can't ride me. That's a perfect symbol for the circumstance. A force in JFK of rejecting the prior strings and going to fix things. It also perfectly fits the other Colorado comms I've gone through tied to MK cells. Cells famous for rejecting control would naturally tie themselves to that symbol. The more I think about it the more it has to be the answer. A horse that bucks off a rider. Q actually linked to a photo collage of that airport. The mysterious Denver International Airport Bunker. DIA, an airport that by all rights never needed to exist as they already had a good airport. Built with murals that depict demons and genocide. And bunkers buried with bizarre stories. 
buildings fully constructed but deemed positioned incorrectly, so they were forever concealed underground. Sounds like a calm about forever keeping secrets buried. Fitting. That was a tangent but a useful one as I likely just solved a major symbol. Before that tangent I was talking about the two Buffalo Bills games in relation to one another. So the shortest way to describe it is. Buffalo Bill equals PSYOP, and so. The 1960 interim JFK election com had the Buffalo Bills collapsing in record fashion. I proposed this meant the CIA PSYOPs were going to be scaled back with the president no longer under the thumb hence, Bronco, com. Conversely the 1993 game was interim of Bill Clinton. A game which had the Buffalo Bills with a historic comeback and win. This could reflect the opposite of the JFK com, which certainly fits with history. A president beholden to CIA with many PSYOPs to come. O.J. Simpson's cowl. This does call into question what was going on with O.J. Simpson. The most famous Buffalo Bills player in the media circus like no other. It's not hard to guess my thoughts here, and looking at my old decodes it looks, I already covered this from a different angle. I won't go through all my findings, but with my new one it's even more clear. Simpson lived on Bundy Drive. The first criminal trial televised was Ted Bundy. Trial of the century, drama long planned out. A PSYOP. How about the symbolism of two Buffalo Bills inside a white Bronco? O.J. Simpson and Al Cowling. The most famous Buffalo Bills escaping police in an hour-long Ford Bronco chase. It's hard to express how big this event was. It was voted in a 2012 nielsen sony survey as third most impactful televised moment of all time right behind 9-11. Mainstream media articles liken it to the JFK assassination in that everyone knew where they were when it happened. I showed enough to demonstrate it was coordinated, but I didn't solve the point of it all. Anything this big is likely to have a big breadcrumb trail I can follow. The thing that made this so big in the first place was OJ was already a star. Therefore, the clues are likely in his final media works. His final work was a TV movie called Frogman that went unaired due to the murder. He starred in one other unaired show about Alice in Wonderland. White rabbits can't jump. Jump plus frog. Two unaired shows about jumping. Frogman was a show where, in a chilling echo of each of those killings, accidentally holds a knife to his daughter's throat. Okay, if it wasn't clear before this was all coordinated that is far too specific. Knife plus OJ family is literally what he is famous for. Another scene mirroring what was to come his character says his ex-wife made a mistake. So yeah, this and probably all his final works have calms for what was to come. That includes media done by the victims. Here is an interesting one. One year to the day Clinton becomes president we have Ron Goldman on a dating game called Studs. Goldman is introduced as a 23-year-old tennis pro. He successfully gets the date with Diane. What is a nickname for Diane? Di. He is likened to Pauly Shore, famous for being hated. He became a waiter who met Nicole Brown six weeks before death. What was the symbolism for O.J. Simpson killing a waiter named Goldman? I'm reminded of Clinton's ties to Goldman Sachs, but while that may be connected, I found what I believe is the direct answer. Before I go into that though, note the last major movie he made. Naked Gun 33 and one third ends with police chasing O.J. Simpson. This was three months from the police O.J. chase. Chase is about race. They chase him despite his innocence in the film. Tells the narrative to come. That was the last major movie, and it sent comms of the narrative to come, but not the point of them. Whatever it coordinated has to be something tied to an enormous amount of money. The final film of his to look at. 1993, CIA code name, Alexa. This is the one that gives away the point. September 23rd. 1992, final underground nuclear test. Plus one. September 24, 1992, CIA code name, Alexa, nuclear plot. 
A movie about terrorists that shoot up churches slash cops and want a microchip with nuclear weapons info on it. Cons focused on O.J. Simpson, the most famous Buffalo Bill, which as I covered is a symbol for public psyops using real events. Thus the end of hidden nuclear testing is an exact match for the scale and type of event that makes sense here. OJ on Ted Bundy Drive Remember, the calm involves killing gold and we are talking about the end of an incredible amount of funding with nuclear tests. How much? First result in a Google search comes up as $5.8 trillion. Even just a fraction of that is mind-boggling. The end of that required ops that I suspect culminated in the O.J. Simpson comms. The historic marker long planned out. The two Buffalo Bills players chosen to send that comm being O.J. Simpson and his driver A.C. Cowling in a white Bronco. Cowl as in hiding identity. I went through some of the comms tied to Ron Goldman on the show, Studs. The show itself likely was a connected comm and when I looked up the premiere date. Its premiere coincided with the production of a film called Singles about Finding Mr. Right. Studs was a dating show also about Finding Mr. Right. Film directed by Cameron Crowe. I dug into this film before because it was connected to a big com read the above closely, and you'll notice Soundgarden has a notable role in it. I was digging into their most famous song, Black Hole Sun and Soundgarden. The origin of their first big songs tie into that film. Black Hole equals symbolism of removing visibility. Released Friday the 13th. Remember the Cameron Crowe com. To get clarity. May 13, 1994. Black Hole Sun. May 13, 1994. The Crowe premiere, famous death of Brandon Lee. May 14, 1994. Buffalo Bill Resort and Casino Las Vegas opens. Buffalo Bill Plus Hotel. There is one calm that hit that week that couldn't be more transparent. May 13, 1994. Black Hole Sun released. May 14, 1994. Serial killer Gacy's artwork to go up in smoke. Businessmen spent 20k to buy killer art to burn it. May 14, 1994. Buffalo Bill Resort opens. Reconcile. Clown serial killer art to burn, removing visibility. Black hole sun to come, removing visibility. Notice the visuals. A woman preparing to kill a live fish. The video ends with them all getting sucked into a black hole. Disguises no one knows. The point appears to be in moving people tied to obsolete ops before the fallout of ending those ops hits. The cons were tied to the end of a trillion-dollar industry. Networks with decades of history. Ops that literally defined history, much like with Gacy or Manson as they became intertwined with media. The act of cleaning up that mess seems to be the focus here. The symbol of O.J. Simpson being driven by A.C. Cowling formerly known as the electric company. AC equals battery symbol. They represent the psyops tied to the Buffalo Bills and the battery is driving fleeing the police on the 17th. They are driving a Bronco, a symbol for not to be controlled. Bucking riders off. They therefore are symbolizing agents choosing not to cooperate and are acting as examples. The most critical part is perhaps the precise time this takes place. They timed it to interrupt Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Tie Game, New York Knicks vs. Houston Rockets. Rockets being a symbol of ops launching. Knicks beat Rockets in relation to police chasing Simpson down. Note the scores of the games in sequence. As police chase down Simpson the Knicks score 91. As in 9-1-1. Same score the day before. Next night Rockets score, 86, symbol of murder. And then the Rockets win. Not likely a symbol of murdering though. Instead it's likely a symbol of, ducking, with a fake death. This becomes clear when we dig deeper. In fact, these next points are highly educational to demonstrate following breadcrumbs in a dig. A correct hypothesis will become more solid over time. Houston Rockets win their first series overcoming 9-11-slash-police comms becoming Clutch City. 
they get a bear mascot tied to this accomplishment. March 14, 1995, Houston Rockets mascot, Clutch, the bear debut. March 14, 1995, first American launched into space by a Russian rocket. Russia equals bear. Clutch City derived from Choke City, which was their nickname due to a game earlier in that year. May 12, 1994, Choke City Rockets blow 20-point lead against the Suns. May 13, 1994, Black Hole Sun. May 13, 1994, The Crow Debut, Famous Death of Brandon Lee. Sun slash Sun slash Faked Death. You can see how these comms circle back and reinforce by showing me a new comm on a day I already decoded for the same thing. It doesn't mean I have the correct answer yet, just that I have at least found the right patterns to follow. I have a long way to go yet, but finding the corner pieces make the puzzle easier. Discerning a few major sports teams is exactly that. I've traced quite a bit of these ops. George Lucas and Cool Hand Luke. One crucial point tied to these kinds of ops is 1977. May 19, 1977. Smokey and the Bandit, Bandit steals carry in white from government, second biggest box office. May 25, 1977. Star Wars, Luke steals carry in white from government. Carry White being a symbol of the first King horror villain. The two biggest films of 1977 including Star Wars featured a carry in white being moved away from government hands. Carry data move. I bring this up because today I had a breakthrough to take crucial decode further. I often mention Star Wars begins with movement of data away from the government by Carrie White, but that's not accurate, the true start begins with a text crawl. A long time ago in a galaxy far far away. Why would anyone begin a sci-fi as though it were in the past? We are talking about what kinds of ops. Lucas' first big film. American graffiti film about music and driving. American Pie, a long, long time ago, song about famous plane crash. Star Wars, a long time ago in a galaxy far far away. Long slash long long slash far far. Before I go further into that I want to mention that film had a 140 million on a 777k budget, jackpot money win, second highest grossing film of year. Part of those comms are about being able to make money, which Star Wars certainly did in record-breaking fashion. The symbolism tied to American Pie is key. A song officially about the plane crash of Buddy Holly. It has lyrics and remorse for his wife who miscarried due to hearing about the crash. This led to Gov policy about press releases of dead. What might we see if we look deeper? Buddy Holly is most remembered for that plane crash. February 3, 1959, Buddy Holly plane crash. Minus six months. August 15, 1958, Buddy Holly marries Maria Elena. August 15, 1958, plane crash 64 dead. August 14, 1958, plane crash 99 dead. Deadliest crash of Lockheed Constellation, Star Network. A calm coordinated on the marriage. Since we now understand Lucas's American graffiti invokes comms tied to these celebrity death ops, we can get even more clarity there. American graffiti is about the music era of Buddy Holly and racing. But even more than that, the movie is about deadly car races. Includes a drag racer who the film's epilogue says will die soon afterwards. A prophetic death. You may be wondering. Was there any famous deaths the week this released? The answer to which is. August 11, 1973, American Graffiti U.S. Premier Racer Death Prophecy. August 12, 1973, Strange Voice tells Bobby Isaac to get out of his race car. After one race death of Smith earlier that day another famous racer Bobby Isaac hears a strange voice and suddenly retires on race day. He believed he would die if he continued. He then started racing again in August 14, 1977, Bobby Isaac Racer Death 45 Heart Attack Due to Racing August 16, 1977, 
Elvis Presley Death 42 Heart Attack This is a month I cover frequently. I'm trying to determine edges of where psyops end and death begins. American Graffiti focuses on a character in pursuit of a woman in a Ford Thunderbird, even going so far as to send messages over the radio. It ends with him leaving her. The Thunderbird was named after a World War II fighter and shown at Detroit's first auto show after World War II. I find this interesting because post-World War II would be an ops transition. It would have the Mustang as an offshoot brand which itself would beget the Bronco. I suspect, Bronco, tied into the sports ops at the time. August 11, 1965, Bronco introduced first sports utility vehicle. September 11, 1965, Denver Broncos sports season begins with Max Speedy Coach. Many of my earlier connections were solid, but this is not. Just a hypothesis. I always worry about that. Whether I'm being clear enough when I switch from confident decoding to guesswork. All strong conclusions begin with a hypothesis. I build out from what I know, but there are many subjects I have barely scratched the surface of. To try and test the Bronco vehicle introduction as a com it's best to begin by looking for easier famous car introduction to compare. The foreign bug and bank. The biggest are likely to have the easiest breadcrumb trails to follow. So I picked the VW Beetle. First car ever to sell 20 million. I choose that one not just because of the prominence but because I already partly decoded it. The symbol of the German bug was perhaps not surprisingly for a foreign bug as in surveillance. Often symbolism is just that simple. I decoded it broadly before, but I can get more specific now. The German Beetle production began the last year of World War II. Given Operation Paperclip it seems likely this was the way it would broadly be paid for. A way to keep it off gov books. So. I look up when it was introduced specifically and the first thing I notice is it shares a date with something interesting. December 27, 1945, VW Beetle debut after Britain takes over. December 27, 1945. World Bank begins with 21 countries joining in Washington, D.C. as first members. Global financing agreement starts alongside the global bug. But one interesting thing about that is the 1945 introduction date was not the easiest one to find. Another date popped up everywhere as I searched and sometimes that means it is the crucial calm tied to it. The date most promoted by far was the U.S. introduction. January 17, 1949, VW Beetle first arrives in America. January 17, 1949, Andy Kaufman born famous foreigner act. I had already extensively decoded Kaufman as a symbol for foreign surveillance. So this is perfect. This is a great example of how when you are right you will find reinforcements to verify it further and further. This method can be used to branch off and solve all sorts of other things. Anyway, my decode focused on his foreigner routine and the origin of his fame. He was on the first episode of Saturday Night Live singing Mighty Mouse. Rat equals ratting symbol. He has a record player and sings about a rat being on the way. Sequence com, seen directly before was about unorthodox evidence in a courtroom for a rape trial. The foreign surveillance promoted as a safeguard against violence. In fact, note his next appearance in the fourth episode which begins with a monologue giving an update about his spying on armed foreigners before then imitating Bunker. As in safe overseas surveillance. Part of the reason for this necessity is the foreign surveillance is latched onto blackmail ops. That first episode of SNL newspaper peeks into the future, a skit about how business is booming after lowering the age of consent to seven. Mighty Mouse, Mouse of Tomorrow. October 16, 1942, Mighty Mouse debut. Plus six. October 22, 1942, now Voyager New York debut, sanitarium viewing. Plus nine. October 31, 1942. NHL first season with original six team starts. October 31, 1942, now Voyager US premiere. 
Voyager equals journey with long distance to travel symbol. Movie involves visiting an insane asylum to view an unwanted child. I wouldn't have connected those last dots if not for focus on the original six teams in the NHL in pop culture. If six is the key then the timing of six and then a flipped six as nine to Halloween. April 7, 1974, Final Maskless Goalie NHL. April 5, 1974, Stephen King debut, Carrie. Carrie being the symbol we went over before tied to Star Wars. That's not a moon, that's a space station. Kaufman played by Carrie in Man on the Moon. As into Carrie, data of bugs from one place to another. Which was the original phonetic symbol of Carrie in the first place. Voyager, sanitarium film ends with a talk to Jerry about not trying to get the moon. His comms are tied to the foreign VW bug and the bug was temporarily phased out August of 1977. DOE slash Q MK hearing. This was the same year Andy Kaufman got his big break, a special of his leading to taxi. May 15, 1984. Ratification Finland Antarctica Treaty. May 16, 1984. Andy Kaufman death. May 17, 1984. Company that buys Atari founded, takes on Atari name July 1, 1984 and shuts down most operations. Finland equals Finnish symbolism. The end as a symbol. Antarctica being the geography com used to signify Operation Paperclip. The way to talk about moving people in a way that can't be discussed publicly. The man on the moon, his death, signified another change in these spy ops. Finland, as an end symbol was a prior hypothesis that this reinforces. Attaching it to Antarctica alongside an end to a foreign bug works to convey end of a surveillance op. May 17, 1984. Stolen Base Record Expos, Alan W. May 17, 1984. Buyer of Atari that folds them instantly. The aliens of Operation Paperclip were given ample reason to stay hidden. June 13, 1942. Roosevelt creates OSS, predecessor to CIA hides Nazis with paperclip. Plus one. June 14, 1942. And Frank Diary begins, published years later with Roosevelt forward. Just like in Frank they were in a bunker, keeping them safe only as long as they remained hidden. A message to the Nazis hiding exactly why they must stay silent, thus the book is written by Frank as in bluntness. I've covered this before, but not this next part. June 25, 1947. The Diary of and Frank published. June 26, 1947. All-time heat record 99.7 degrees Fahrenheit measured Paris. Horrors revealed equals heat applied. Other heat records I've covered use the same type of symbolism but applied to political figures, but this shows it's a basic symbol. It's effectively a psychological campaign. As a symbol the heat is a marker for a separate event that is driving it. It can be applied to anything. In the same way anyone facing criminal prosecution could be said to feel the heat. Other symbols tied to psyops are much more pointed to a specific intent. This one is a good example. Death of the Elephant Man. I've never covered this historical figure before but the date plus name gives it away. Post-1861 elephant symbolism is typically tied to Republican and here we have the Elephant Man, conceived in 1861. The exact same year of the first elephant president. That gives us the cipher, so now we just have to interpret intent. I say, conceived, rather than born because that's a key part of the story. The cause of his horrible appearance was said to be a curse from a scary elephant, while the mother was pregnant. An elephant that frightened her. That really gives it away if you've read my decode on elephant symbolism. After slaves were freed the Republican elephants should have sailed through every election easily with the freed slave votes. But that's not what happened. PSYOPs were created to scare voters away. October 24, 1874. NAST, White League KKK. November 7, 1874. NAST, New York Herald Third Term Panic. 
November 9, 1874. New York Herald, famous hoax involving escaped predators. When we contrast the elephant man history we can understand the players and intent. The symbol of man hideous to look at. Just like the elephant that cursed his appearance that way he scares people away. The intent was to say, this is how to portray the Republican Party. A healthy birth turned into a deformed monster over time. In fact, if you look at the timeline, 1872, Republican wins POTUS, both parties are Republican. Showing just how powerful it was early on. 1880, Republican wins POTUS. 1884 August, Elephant Man Freak Sideshow begins touring. 1884 November, Democrat wins POTUS. This is another calm that strongly reinforces my past ones. Moreover we now have the tools necessary to decode other iterations. When did Elephant Man become prominent in pop culture again? October 3, 1980. Elephant Man by David Lynch. November 4, 1980. Reagan wins POTUS. That's almost the exact same relationship in timing as the last one. However don't be so quick to assume it means the same thing, unlike last time that Elephant won, and this film appears to humanize the Elephant Man, so it may have had the opposite intent. I need to dig deeper for clarification. I know Reagan had a big force pushing both for and against him, so I can't assume either at a glance. If humanizing it makes sense given how damaged the Republican brand was post-Nixon. This was 1980 and Nixon peak Watergate was 1974. The film ends with the Elephant Man getting media promotion and then a standing ovation from a crowd before dying. That death, if my hypothesis is correct, would symbolize the end of the prior view people had. The death of the th monster. Let's not forget this calm. October 3, 1980. Elephant Man by David Lynch. November 4, 1980. Reagan wins POTUS. March 18, 1981. The Greatest American Hero begins airing with main character, Hinckley. March 30, 1981. President Reagan and others are shot by a man named Hinckley. Death of the Elephant Man to humanize Reagan as he was viewed as a monster. Take those two last comms together, and it paints a picture of a partial psyop. The story itself is literally about a superhero with an alien suit, school teacher trying to thwart an attack on the president's life. Not the only time for timing like this either. September 6, 1975. Secrets of Isis debut, first female superhero show. September 5, 1975. Gerald Ford assassination attempt by female Manson follower, Lynette Alice, Squeaky, from Flying heroine named Cameron has Mason as love interest and is a high school teacher. Remember this was the first female superhero on TV and the same month two different women decided to make a public spectacle trying to kill President Ford. It creates a template which was then followed under Reagan. Returning to sports comms. 2016, the year of the choke. Famously beginning with the Golden State, blowing a 3-1 lead in the finals. The Cavs with King James scoring 77 to lose just before the big comeback. The loss of Golden State possible a symbol of wealth. This may be nothing, but when I noticed gold losing. Another famous choke that year catches my eye. July 10, 2016. Portugal upset win championship in France. July 10, 2016. Seth Rich death. July 10, 2016. Nicolas Cage death hoax. It made me wonder if there was a theme in these comms about knocking out wealth. Perhaps in terms of media or something. Since at the time WikiLeaks couldn't get any airplay on mainstream media or live. Moonves had just taken over Viacom. Media play was legendarily one-sided. July 10, 2016. Seth Rich's death, DNC data director of new voter registration. July 11, 2016. CrowdStrike paid $98,849.84 by DNC. August 2, 2016. Sean Lucas death, D 
DNC process server and close friend of Seth Rich. August 3, 2016, CrowdStrike again paid by DNC. There were other upsets, some of which I've covered before but that last one just raised my eyebrow enough that I wanted to save it as a placeholder to dig into later. Speaking of these 2016 chokes. For the next sports choke, here's an interesting lead from Trump. Update, Championship Rounds, Removing 13. There was an interesting post about boxing history by President Trump yesterday. That boxing died due to the removal of the championship rounds 13, 14, and 15. This looks like a calm, but what for? After digging into this for a while I do have a hypothesis. The official reason championship rounds were removed was the match of South Korean Kim duk koo by Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Kim Duck went into a coma and died after. If this is a calm duck here surely symbolizes something important to have instigated such sweeping changes. There are a lot of ways to invoke a symbol in a person and one of them is birth date. July 29, 1955, Kim Duck Koo born. July 29, 1955, First U-2 test flight. Symbolism of a high stealth aircraft. It's not a certainty, but the U-2 is a good hypothesis to start with. U-2 symbolism is typically tied to blackmail videos and USSR surveillance. May 1, 1960, U-2 incident, Gary Powers shot down by USSR for spying. May 10, 1960, Bono U-2 born. May 10, 1960, U-2 project revealed. August 1, 1977, U-2 Gary Powers spy death crash. August 3, 1977, MKUltra hearing. The band with the same name U2 had original artwork described by the very people behind promoting it as pedophilic. That gives us the likely intent but not the answer. To go further we now we return to the incident itself and see if anything jumps out. Like USSR news. Remember U2 began with a spy program over the Soviet Union. November 10, 1982, USSR head Leonid Brezhnev death. November 13, 1982, Kim Duck Sue career ending bout with Ray Boom Boom from Youngstown, Ohio. This is the only event large in the time frame to justify everything we know so far. That doesn't make it the right answer, but it does give us a hypothesis to test. The names involved Ray plus Boom. Ray by itself is a symbol of a ray of light for visibility. And Ray being tied to blackmail reminds me of Ray Chandler. Furthermore, they are from Youngstown. If this is the answer connections will continue and become ever more clear. Leonid's health decline is most tied to Mach 25, 1982 during a visit to Soviet Central Asia a catwalk collapsed on top of Brezhnev and security detail. Asia the 17 win duck that died was from South Korea. Possible messaging for the upcoming duck. December 10, 1982. Boxing removes round 13 to 15 after Duck Ku Kim's death. December 11, 1982. Jerry Lewis boxer loses to Cesar Chavez. Jerry Lewis symbolism is strongly tied to child blackmail. As is Lewis Carroll. October 8, 1957, Worst UK Nuclear Accident, Wind Scale Fire. Heating up too fast. October 8, 1957, Jerry Lee Lewis recorded, Great Balls of Fire, Mysterious Recording with, Stokes. December 7, 1957, Great Balls of Fire Movie, Jamboree with Jerry Lee Lewis, Domino, Dick Clark. December 12, 1957, Jerry Lee Lewis marries 13-year-old child. Specifically marrying a 13-year-old. Thus removing round 13. After his child marriage calms his music, Great Balls of Fire, with lyrics of Break My Will, would invoke the press roasting of things going public. There was another pop culture calm at the time that makes the intent even more clear. December 10, 1982. Boxing removes round 13. December 10, 1982, Airplane 2 The Sequel. 
this is a movie I decoded here. Scene, psychopath priest child molester and family from before with fake death was escaping a rape trial scandal. The point being you couldn't pick a movie with more clear comms about ducking a scandal about children with a death. Take it together and the point of Jerry Lewis defeated as well as removing 13th round is likely messaging about a change in blackmail systems. Looking into Brezhnev's past, and it seems just before his collapse he was having a feud with the KGB. That fits perfectly as they would be the exact people to hold his blackmail, and they were in a position to use it to remove him. This looks to be the start of what I often decode in 1986. One key symbol being Top Gun. A movie most notable for promoting the military. Effectively a marriage of media and an entity they had long maligned during and post-Vietnam. It, too, was coordinated with the death of Great Balls of Fire, Children and Surveillance Comms. Trump talking about the death of boxing post-change is a possible reflection of how different the landscape was before the agreement was made. This change heralded a period of media switching from anti to promoting government. Prior to transition military hitting with blackmail appears to have been a more acceptable tactic. That's not to say it no longer existed, only steps were taken to prevent loss of puppets. May 28, 1979, Chernobyl, 2 begins operation. May 28, 1979, Dolly Parton, Great Balls of Fire. The Chernobyl calm ties into a theme park that was to open by the government the day of disaster. The day before it was contained. May 3, 1986, Dollywood Backyard Theme Park. May 4, 1986, Chernobyl contained. Transition from Gov Control to Industry. Boxing removed the championship rounds 13 to 15. I connected it as a symbol to the death of the USSR head that same week. The point was. In changes to prevent heads of state championship from being removed as quickly slash easily as the KGB did then. A way to fix this issue of axing uncooperative heads. I bring it up again because there was another big sporting event then. November 10, 1982, USSR head Leonid Brezhnev death. November 20, 1982, the play most famous college football game of all time. December 10, 1982, boxing removes round 13. Championship rounds due to November 13th bout. This college game is an interesting one to reconcile. Ranked as top moment in this list anyway. And you surely see that pattern of timing in sports the famous game fits right in. A game where future Bronco John Elway's team band preemptively went onto the field. The other team won by running through them. Notice the details of this most famous game. The famous moment of the play involves a player named Gamer for the Golden Bears in 1982. That calm explains the point here. These are technical colleges, after all. Golden Bear. Gold equals money. Adult Bear equals Russia symbolism. The play won by surprise handoff to Gamer. These are likely comms setting up the Tetris narrative. Best-selling game for many years equals gold. October 25, 1964. Dwight Garner born, the play, Golden Bear. October 25, 1964. NFL, famous wrong way play for Vikings. Golden Bears, runs the wrong way. Originally released in June 6, 1984. The Tetris comms are strongly tied to the end of the USSR. November 1989, Fall of the Russian Built Berlin Wall. November 1989, Tetris released Russian game about walls game published originally by Robert Maxwell. The Golden Bear running through being the money to entice. A narrative to sweeten the transition out of Warsaw. It becomes an icon for the USSR the narrative to explain to the populace why a different way of doing things, wrong way, is, gold. I'm glad to have straightened that out. That calm had long been confusing, but now it's clear. This reinforces my hypothesis that the breakup was planned out with events to make the USSR look bad. Tetris was likely a narrative to push the public in the USSR. 
the famous moment of the Golden Bears rushing through the opposing band. Likely representing newly funded individuals running through the chorus trying to keep the USSR together. Tetris was an anomaly and this helps explain why. But there is another side to that story. John Elway was the guy on the other side. Though when it comes to Elway that college game was just a precursor to even more famous moments. Elway and Oscars. He is probably the most famous quarterback I've yet to decode, so let's fix that now. June 28, 1960. John Elway born. June 28, 1960. Murder. Inc. Premier. The film Monsters Incorporated took its title from this, which demonstrates how important a com it likely was. It is a movie about the enforcement arm of a formerly extremely famous criminal syndicate. Officially responsible for 400 to 1,000 contract killings Murder Incorporated held an unprecedented fame for its time, and yet it's practically unknown today. One aspect of this story really jumps out at me. This National Crime Syndicate was founded during the earliest known organized crime summit. May 16, 1929, First Crime Summit in History, Murder Inc. May 16, 1929. First Academy Awards. I've long decoded the theatrics of what we see in the news about crime as messaging and this ties the two together. The biggest and first ceremony to celebrate movies same day as the biggest and first crime syndicate becoming public. The film Murder Incorporated was the debut of Rosenberg who would later win an Academy Award for his most famous film, Cool Hand Luke. A film starring George as Lucas. That, likely solves George Lucas symbolism. Lucas known as Cool Hand Luke Skywalker. A prisoner, Cool Hand Luke, refusing to be controlled. Origin of nickname equals, bluffing with a hand of nothing, earning respect of criminals. Propaganda in media to influence criminals. What we've got here is a failure to communicate, 11th greatest movie quote of all time. But I'll decode that film later, let's not stray too far from John Elway. He retired after back-to-back -back Super Bowl victories. Those two top seasons must be markers for something big and are likely a good place to try and find what it means to invoke John Elway as a calm. Those prime years also had Terrell Davis as the second most famous Bronco. A new recruit who was given MVP for the first Super Bowl win. He introduced military saluting as a celebration. His career as a star began during an American Bowl, a foreign NFL contest in Japan. A contest that began August 3 RD 1986. That date is big to reconcile with military saluting. Military media promotion culminated into 1986's Top Gun. August 3, 1977 equals MK Ultra hearing slash data transfer DOE. Process changed in handling again in 1986. Russia Japan. Flying Bronco. The start of those two legendary Denver Bronco seasons. August 31, 1997. Bronco's 2x Super Bowl season begins. August 31, 1997. Princess Diana death. I would be inclined to view this as a coincidence if not for my prior efforts in digging into both of these subjects. August 31, 1997. Broncos 2x Super Bowl season begins. September 7, 1997. Final Fantasy 7 USA. Major plot element includes Tiny Bronco, a plane for the main characters. A Bronco that can fly. Mile High Stadium. Biggest launch of an RPG of all time. Plain symbolism plus Denver. Terrell Davis began with that foreign game in 1995. What was Denver doing in 1995? Opening day airport. The one with the Freemasonry symbols and terrorism iconography everywhere. And the buried bunker. Not just the tiny Bronco, but the literal terrorist organization main cast in the game is called Avalanche, the same name as the Denver NHL team. If nothing else, this shows they were thinking of Denver sports teams as they built the symbolism, but it's also more than that. In prior decodes I already connected Final Fantasy VII to the op surrounding Princess Diana. 
August 31, 1997, Princess Diana car crash. September 7, 1997, FF7 US release date, most famous for shocking death of heroin. But now we have more clarity. The fantasy climax is the first major plot in escaping Midgar where the doomed heroine in a car that needs to be protected on the road. A parallel to the car crash. Especially if you read the earliest reports that suggest it was murder. The comms are tied to the prior year's Super Bowl in 1996. Especially the famous halftime show with Diana Ross. Diana equals Diana. In 1996 Diana famously exited dramatically in a helicopter during the Super Bowl halftime show. I cover it here. Her performance begins with the song, Stop. In the name of love. What could having a famous Diana with her name in giant letters plastered on the field asking someone to stop mean? The answer comes from asking what else was in the media at this time. Princess Diana in the headlines at this time speaking out against the royal family. Hence stop. Princess Diana and the divorce. The very next month she announced her agreement to terms. She was vocal about being in danger with the royals plotting to kill her. I believe these comms were asking her to fly to exit the stage. A narrative eventually agreed to, but not necessarily her so much as others. Celebrities are often faces for large groups. This is why it wasn't a foregone conclusion what happened in football. It was likely predicated on compliance. A narrative planned out and eventually followed. The show climaxed with Diana singing I Will Survive. As she flies away. A song with a telling history. November 27, 1978. Assassination of Harvey Milk First gay public officer becomes gay icon. November 27, 1978, I Will Survive debut on Love Tracks Gloria Gaynor. Notice his name Milk equals MLK. He was famously assassinated and became a cultural icon for the gay community. Up until 1997 Final Fantasy was only Nintendo. A cornerstone until they left for Sony. September 7, 1997, Seattle loses to Denver Broncos. September 7, 1997, Final Fantasy VII released. In 1997 Nintendo owned the Seattle Mariners. The symbolism being Nintendo losing with what was at the time an unprecedented marketing push for an RPG. The conflict between Sony and Nintendo is another decode here. Originally they were going to work together, and I traced some of the comms for it. These threads chronicle me figuring things out, they aren't user-friendly, but I will be fixing that. I'll be making summary posts that cleanly explain all of my findings. I don't fully understand it yet, but I do understand enough to explain certain subjects and events. Before I put that early report about Diana being hunted, well here's the cover of that magazine. September 7, 1997. FF7 released, Bronco Flight. September 7, 1997. Denver Bronco beat Seattle. September 8, 1997. Princess Diana Time Magazine. September 8, 1997. Ally McBeal Premier. Princess Diana was the old image of feminism and as her death goes public we get the new one introduced to pop culture. That show is most famous for popularizing one of the first internet memes. The 3D Dancing Baby, one of the first 3D animations as well. January 5, 1998, 3D Dancing Baby debut Ally McBeal. January 5, 1998, Sunny Death of Sunny and Cher. Sunny equals Sony. That Sony equals Sunny is a confident decode as I've covered it extensively in posts. I even dug into the pronunciation and learned the two were pronounced identically in Japan. June 7, 1965. Sunny and Cher breakout hit recorded, I Got You Babe. June 7, 1965, Sony introduces its home videotape recorder. June 26, 1975, Sunny and Cher divorce. June 27, 1975, Sony's Spider-Man Tobey Maguire born.
Spider-Man was used as a comm to coordinate how Facebook and other surveillance pushes. It also presents a riddle to investigate, but looking at the timeline and premise of the show. May 20, 2002, Spider-Man Rules, Time Magazine. May 20, 2002, Ally McBeal, Final Episode. Cancelled. October 28, 2001, Monsters, Inc. October 29, 2001, Ally McBeal Final Season Begins. Ratings Plunge. Remember these comms were tied to Sony and Nintendo splitting as well as Sony taking in Square. Show begins with the retelling of the breakup of Ally and Gil. Gil just so happens to be the currency in all Final Fantasy games. Maybe coincidence but. Episode begins with the retelling of the breakup, she goes through how as children they would smell each other's butts like dogs, and then it shows escalation. Symbol of Ops work leashed, check my animal post for many examples. After the breakup they are forced to work together. Reconcile the dancing 3D baby in relation to Sony slash Nintendo during that time. They were both pushing new 3D. September 1996, Super Mario 64, 3D Nintendo push into culture. September 1996, Crash Bandicoot. 3D Sony push into culture. They put the two games in kiosks around the world as each one promoted new 3D tech. At the time Sony slash Nintendo were both competing after working together. The being forced to work with your X premise is likely a symbol of the two companies in competition while engaging in the same ops. Much like NFL, the ops and comms are far more broad than just games. The ops are tied to online as well as surveillance and blackmail. The show begins with two kids in a romantic relationship. Right after it transitions to sexual harassment. A co-worker has Epstein's bar, a disease forcing him to molest co-workers. Though I have yet to define the extent of these acts. The cons often seem to suggest they position their ops as protection. Take that, Monsters Inc. slash Murder Inc. calm which I covered before as well as in this post. In history the person who brings down the criminals is Abraham, Kid Twist. A character played by Peter Falk in that Murder, Inc. show, Fox, just like Ally McBeal. He would be best known as the famous Detective Columbo for 40 years. Often appearing in top 5 detectives alongside Sherlock Holmes. In fact the very first result puts him next to Holmes. Holmes was a calm tied to early widespread phone surveillance ops and Columbo was likely a variant for harder criminals. People did get arrested and so it's possible the promotion of that criminal syndicate amounted to a trap. At least that surface level take, I have barely dug into it. There is clearly many sides to these. Many sports teams are subsidized, stadiums outright purchased by tax. For that it might be expected they provide public service in the comms. That may run counter with what we can tell goes on, but I'm not talking about reality, just how they present themselves in comms. It's also possible they are exactly that way and I just need to get better at decoding. My own past attests to plenty of evil that goes on in the world, so it defies reasoning to assume the big companies are innocent. No. I need to dig deeper and understand not just what they say they are in comms, but what they actually are. The heroes, the villains, and most importantly the ones that did the right thing when it mattered most. Cause that's what we need most right now, clarity to see who is helping and who is hurting us. To know who is causing problems and take actions to speed it up towards a better world. Telegram chat. Join the decoding blog telegram group. Begin decoding. Send leads. This has been Sports Chokes, Red Sox Massacre, Coach McVeigh slash McVeigh, Movie Murder Inc., Death of the 1861 Elephant Man and Buffalo Bill O.J. Simpson.